QT interval is time from the start of Q wave to the end of T wave. According to this, QT interval represents time taken for ventricular depolarization and repolarization. When it is difficult to tell where the QT interval is ends, use the tangent method. Firstly, let's draw the baseline according to the PQ segment. Then draw the second line along the slope of T wave. Place where the drawn line is intersects the baseline, it is end of QT interval. For measurements of QT interval, we usually use the second standard lead or lead V5 and V6. As a result, we should use the largest measurement. The electrical events underlying the QT interval corresponds with the phases of action potential generation at the cellular level. Specifically, the interval between the onset of Q wave and the beginning of S wave corresponds to the initial rapid upstroke of action potential phase 0 and early phase of repolarization phase 1. The interval between the S wave and the peak of T wave corresponds to the plateau phase or the phase 2 and from the peak of T wave to the end of T wave corresponds to the final repolarization phase phase 3. The duration of action potential and therefore the duration of QT is most affected by alternation in phases 2 and 3. During the phase 2, L-type of calcium channel currents go inside to the cell and play the dominant role. Also, potassium current goes outside the cell in this phase. During phase 3, the potassium channel currents go outside the cell and play the dominant role. The duration of QT depends on hormonal secretion, therefore it is depends on the gender. Males have greater concentration of testosterone, and testosterone decreases the calcium channel current and increases potassium channel current. So the membrane potential faster becomes more negative. That lead to decreasing width of phase 2 and phase 3 therefore makes the QT interval shorter. Females have a high concentration of estrogen and estrogen decreases potassium channel current. According to this, membranes stay in positive longer period of the time. That lead to increasing of action potential with and longer QT interval. So female's QT is longer than male's QT. Also QT depends on the heart rate. Therefore, if the heart rate is high, QT interval becomes shorter. And if the heart rate is low, QT interval becomes longer. These changes make it harder to compare QT interval measured at different heart rates in the same patient. To account for this and thereby improve the reliability of QT measurement, the QT interval can be corrected for the heart rate using the variety of mathematical formula. Firstly, you need to calculate heart rate. If the heart rate is between 60 and 100, we use the Bazet formula. But if the heart rate is less than 60 or more than 100, we usually use Friedrichs or Framingham formula. For calculation QTC in natural fibrillation cases, you can also use Friedrichs formula. Let's try. For this you need to measure RR and QT intervals and calculate the heart rate. Paper speed is 50 mm per second. RR interval is 9 large boxes and 2 small boxes.
so together is 0 0.94 seconds or 940 milliseconds. QT interval is equal to 3 large boxes and 5 small boxes. The sum is 0 0.4 second or 400 milliseconds. For calculation the heart rate, 60 divides the RR interval in seconds. Heart rate is 63 beats per minute. But now you don't need to use math every time when you want to calculate QTC. There are lots of online calculators or application for calculation of QTC. In this app we need to put RR interval in milliseconds and measured QT interval. Fortunately, apps calculate simultaneously by all common formula. So, in our example, we use Bezet formula. And corrected QT is 413. The links for downloading apps for your smartphone you can find in description. For the understanding normal ranges of QT interval, let's check the American Heart Association recommendation for the standardization and interpretation of electrocardiogram exactly part 4. As a practical clinical limits for considering the QT interval as abnormal, it is recommended the adjusted QT of 460 milliseconds or longer in women and 450 milliseconds or longer in men be considered as prolonged QT interval, and that QT 390 and shorter be considered as a short QT interval. Why is so important? A long QT interval related to specific type of ventricular tachycardia, which called torsades de pointes. It has a characteristic morphology in which the QRS complex twists around the baseline. Also, torsades de pointes can degenerate into ventricular fibrillation. Both torsades de pointes and ventricular fibrillation can lead to impairment of ventricular output that lead to low blood pressure, this situation called unstable hemodynamic, therefore can be life-threatening. On the other hand, short QT syndrome is associated with the increasing risk of paroxysmal atrial and ventricular fibrillation that also related to unstable hemodynamics and can be cause of sudden cardiac death. If you like this video, please press the like and subscription buttons. Have a good day. Here we go.